Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mo Fungus. I got Big J, Big Jim, Jimbo Detroit sitting on the other end here. Tiny, tiny Jim. Tiny Tim. Peg Lagan and But what uh up, how not you much, man. We're gonna try something different today. Episode twenty three. We're gonna watch some of our uh our best videos and do a little behind the scenes chit chat about what we're doing, where we got some of the ideas, and we're gonna start off with one of our rap songs here. For the we kids. Got our, uh... Our dab video growing like crazy out there, folks. So keep checking that out. That thing's over 5G's now. Yeah, people are just sitting at home dabbing all day long and they're probably searching diamonds trying to figure we, out. We what, nooked our way up to the top, baby. <laughs> yeah, in the top, we mean 5,000 views. <laughs> yeah, but there's not a lot on the dab side. We're, we're ahead of the curve, baby. But yeah, there, we're, there's a couple videos with 100,000 views, and there's like. Nothing, so we're right in the middle. And uh, we're talking a little bit less views on the one tonight, but it, it's a little bit newer and a different uh, genre, a little bit of our comedy rap. Right. Like I was telling them, if I'm over at a friend's house and they have kids, we call it T and G, because the, the name might offend. A little T and G, a little T's and grits. So we're going to check this out. So you came up with the, uh, let's see here, using the gimbal right off the crack, but, so I wanted to talk about this for a second here. You came up with the name Hoagie Boys. My last name's Hogan, but you, apparently you came up with this name before you even met me, so you want to talk about that a little bit? We're going back, baby. We're going back to, uh, God, must have been sophomore or junior year, me and two others, at uh, South would uh, rap at at parties. And I don't know where Hoagie came from other than like we were sitting on the back wall, uh, I, I believe at Ted's house, at his folks' house, when we were, it was about the fifth time, sixth time that we had been in a party where people had requested the three of us to freestyle at some point later in the night when people are drunk enough to listen to this stupidity. Yeah. And we're sitting on in the back wall in his back there, and we're like going through these names, and Hoagie Brothers pops out. I don't want to take credit for it because I don't totally remember, but it's what stuck. And uh, we would get chants, Hoagie Bros, Hoagie Bros, from the crews that knew what we were doing in these parties in high school. And uh, we, we got going, Chris, Iggy, and uh, myself. And uh, the Hoagie Bros, and people were asking to be part of this group, dude. Like we'd go to, dude, let me get a, let me get a verse, let me get in there. And uh, we were real selected. I, I didn't run that part of it really. They would, uh, well, the leader of the group, or I, I don't think there was really a designated leader because we didn't do anything <laughs> outside of at about eleven thirty at night when we started getting the chance, baby. That's when we go. Is it time? Yeah, it's and like we the get Beastie a, Boys. We'd freestyle to Kid Rock or. Dr. Dre or whatever was on the radio, really. It wasn't uh, uh, a real thing. But then when you and me got back together two decades later, you're asking, we're talking about rap names. I go, dude, we got to go back to this. The Hoagie Bros, it made sense with your last name, makes sense with my big old belly and thinking Hoagies. Yeah. And, uh, well, let's so get the one thing straight. I have no rap background. I'm the whitest man ever. Not that a white dude can't rap, because obviously Eminem has proven that point, but... I don't know. I'm a I'm a jam band jazz uh, kind of guy. I do listen to a little bit of rap, the Dr. Dre, the more the more popular stuff. I'm not really into the newer rap, but I never rapped a day in my life until Jimmy, excuse me, Jimmy would do some freestyling. So the way this tune actually panned out a little bit was we bought this one beat for one of our other skits and I figured, hell, I, bu I paid a hundred for this beat. I might as well use it as many times as I can. I own the rights to it. So I played the beat for Jimmy and titty and grit titties and grits is something this kid's been saying for a long, long time. And I don't know, I guess that's, that's what he heard. So he threw that out. And then from there I just recorded him rapping like five times over the whole song. And then I took that back, pulled out, some of the key phrases he, that he used and then tried to make, it was like a puzzle and it worked out pretty good. Well, the initial, you got to talk about the first six months. The initial was you put this thing in my hands and I, uh, 
we we went down a road of talking about minimum wage galore, and this rap oh, yeah. was uh, getting real hard, dude. I mean, that's it just still was, the, that's still in the works, my friend. It's still it was, still, but it was hard to fucking turn this thing into something that it was just more serious. Titties and grits fit better because it was able to be dumber, and you could tell the story easier just from the title. But minimum wage glory, you really got to paint a picture. And I just didn't see it happening with the crew that was going on. So it was hard. Um, but you kept bugging me podcast after podcast. And uh, yeah, we were talking about it in the writer's room. Like, every where is the where's rap? The rap? Yeah, where's sorry. The not fucking podcast. rap, dude. Not a podcast. A fucking writer's room. Sorry. But uh, the guy bugged, gets one. He gets one fucking job. He's like, I'm going to do it. Him and his buddy. And then. Him and his buddy, they break up, and uh, the rap's never been written. But Nope, we had only several verses, and it wasn't great. It wasn't in a final product mode, and we didn't have a studio out here to do. And we had spent a lot of time just up to that point. But um, it, it sounds all easy during quarantine when I got fucking oh, yeah. 24 hours a day. This was uh, in the midst of me uh killing it at work and working 55 hour week. So, right, but, right. uh, shout out to, to David who let us use his beautiful property. He got here six months prior to us, uh, getting our hands on it. So he, he hadn't moved in long, hasn't been there long. I went there one time. He's a buddy I work with. I see this place. I said, we got to do something here. And Kevin and I are on the other uh, sidelines writing titties and grits. Cur- you know, it, it was a fast process, but when I saw this barn, I said, we got to fucking be in army fatigue and camo and we got to do it at this place. This just contrasting view of you got titties and grits, you got a barn and you got camouflage. Right. And I said, the three of them all mixing together sends you on a real roller coaster brain ride through the song. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know what kind of outfits. I didn't even know what this place was. All I did was pack up the gear and Jimmy told me where to go. We pull up. Of course, the barn was the first thing that stood out. It's a beautiful looking barn, so we set up a couple of shots in the outside the barn, in the barn. But we didn't even know. I'll play it a little bit now, but just be part of the magic of it all. It started. Uh, it started to snow while we were while we were filming it, and that that snow adds such a good element to the to the mix. Your cameras are good enough. It picked it up. It didn't make it um, Ill- illegible, for lack of a better way of putting it. it. It was we were able to see the snow, but it didn't get in the way of. I wore bright colors under the camo. I think that helped. You had yeah. pale, pale skin underneath <laughs> your camo. That helped. Yes. I mean, this thing sticked out. I get more questions. If anyone wants to know the most questions, how was Kevin able to do this? Was he really in the snow? And how cold was he? And I, I'm, I have a high body temp and very low patience for people asking me these questions over and over. So much credit for, for fungus on this. And I kept saying, I go, this fucking pussy. I go, I, I I was warm as hell. But I take for granted I'm in this big ass outfit and everything. But I'm just a high temperature dude. So like everybody gives, especially David, whose house it was to this day, gives the utmost credit for fungus for no shirt on. And it's by far the most questions I get on this video. How was Kevin able to do this with no no shirt? It had to be done. That's the bottom line. Because we I had the jacket on and it was wasn't even half the, the quality that no shirt was but to be honest with you i had a hat on which keeps a ton of heat in i had pants on and stuff and i was running around the whole time so i think i actually got sick from doing it but i don't think i got sick from being out in the cold i think i just got sick because i barely ate anything that day drinking coffees and just my mind my mind was working the whole time my body was working the whole time we were we we, we worked our asses off that day I think we put David, I think David was a little surprised at uh, the amount of work that it was, too. I didn't pitch it to him as a a six-hour day, but um, he was a real trooper, and man, was this property just primo. Yeah. These shots of you up in this barn hole, that's, that's just the classic view from the whole video, man. I love that. We did so many takes. It was a great time, though. It's so much fun doing this shit. Yeah, <laughs> but let me see if I can get pull up a nice. So this is inside the barn, and we kind of cleared out a nice little area. I have no idea what that that front front of that car is doing in there. Is there Mustang, any... yeah, some seventies Mustang grill. 
but yeah, we tried to make it as cinematic as possible. We had like one worky. We had we brought a light, and then we just used some of the ambient light. But yeah, man, that that barn. Well, when we got there, I was over. I was almost overwhelmed because he he lives on three thousand acres of actual state land. So we could have went into the woods. We could have been on the edge of the woods. There's a pond there. There's like a little uh, bridge that goes over the pond. There's a bunch of cattails and stuff. So we didn't know what we were gonna try and do. So to to me, I kind of just figured, let's just focus on this barn, because we could always go back there and do something else. Another oh, location please, yes. There. I want to do uh, Schnapps Gay from the pool there. Uh, oh, Schnapps. But we had so, to get this. So the last shot of the day was pretty much out front of that. Well, we know the walking and the gimbal was really, but <clears throat> I was demanding takes out front of this white barn door these lines were just catching me so perfect as a background and did it i mean we're right here it's so yeah. perfect this didn't turn out as much as we wanted to it looked great and what a silhouette but it's so faded out a little dark but you, you get know the gist I, of it. yeah it's tough though you, there's always going to be one part of the video you wish you could kind of change and unfortunately this is it but again i i, I don't really regret much I love um, the move I do here, though. Go back to that real quick. It's it's fast, but it's slick. It looks well when you can see it on a bigger screen. You know, I really did. I mean, that was all in one yeah. one take, and you didn't mess with it to make it that. I did good uh, as far as the robotics and the 70s dancing going on there. Yeah, that's one thing that everybody tells me. They love the way Jimmy flows. Because, I'm I, again, I have no... I have no dance bone in my body. I'm kind of doing the running man, a, a, a mutilated version of the running man at all points or yelling and, and punching at the camera. Those are my go-to moves. I'm more, I can move my hands pretty decently, but when it comes to legs, I, uh, I don't, I don't do a very good job. The contrast so. is great though. And even right there <laughs> when I'm walking next to you and just like that, like I, I, I get off on watching those when it's not something I remember like we didn't go into this like yo do this or that we just right. really were ourselves and it's it's why it works like me just in the background and half the takes weren't usable because we didn't know how we were going to do the verse or who was going to do it or both of us were going to sing it or not so I'm lip singing in half of them that I shouldn't have been in and that's true yeah well that was the for the chorus because we did have you we recorded your chorus and then there was something wrong with the audio and we were just we wanted to get it out again. This whole thing was kind of whipped together in a unprofessional fashion, but sometimes when lightning strikes, you want to capture it, and we did. The and song, the, yeah, yeah. The it's song funny, we wrote within like a day, you know, probably a couple hours. The video we shot all in one day. We we didn't like have any pre plans for it, as contrast to the, to the mitt where. We actually what we 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 took that we knew where we were going. We had to find all that shit, and it was in the midst of the. Uh, the Corona scare. So getting like rubber gloves and masks and stuff were a lot harder than we thought. But this one kind of just all came together, which kind of shows you, man, if you just go with the flow, the world will, the world will p provide you with what you need. Big Jimmy on the, on the camera there. I just got a text that someone's laying in their bed right now, watching our podcast from last night. So I'm just shooting a text back that we're doing one live. Nice. What was last so, night's episode? These things are flying by. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was on our Fat Earth Comedy YouTube channel. Yeah, and I hope people know that by now. That's the only and way you're going to find this thing. Was Happy 420. Oh yeah, that was in the daytime. We were doing a little day shoot uh, shout out. I tried to get that thing up by 420, but the, the stoners don't care. By the time they even realize it's 420, it's 433 anyway. Well, plus you know what I pictured was like someone's going to hit their pipe. And then all of a sudden they get this notification and it's, it's 420 and 28 seconds. They're about to hit their pipe. They'll get their 420, 2020, 420 time hit in. And, and they go to hit it, but they get this notification that the Hoagie Brothers in the Fat Earth Comedy crew is on. And they go to get that. And by the time they go to hit their pipe, it's 421 and we're the bad guys and they unsubscribe us. So yeah. from that daydream, I said, no, nah, it's, it's best he got it out at like 435 or so. He got to let us not get distracted anyone out there and let's see if we can conjure up any more juicy tidbits so this part right here we're walking down the uh there's like a massive road that leads to his to his house <clears throat> you can see the barn right here in the background 
Yeah. But again, that's the actual snow coming down. Like I was a little nervous because my camera gear, it is weather sealed, but it was literally snowing on it and it was melting. The gimbal, well, it was sitting I had no idea. Stagnant. Right. It was, you know, not in this shot. And God bless David. I wanted to say shout out there. We threw him into the filming area thing. Yeah, he did, did a good job. Hurt. Yeah. Did a better um, job than you, bro. Your footage was unusable. Did I film? You filmed me. Remember how, like, I filmed you walking towards me coming out of the weeds? Yeah. Then you did it for me. And th- it's not your fault. It was just no, fully yeah, out of focus the entire time. I was going to say, this dude sets me up for failure, really. It's on uh, manual focus. And then it I'll hand it back. Manual, go, oh, but... fuck. It was on auto. Oh, <laughs> maybe I, yeah. Well, it's that's why you get a camera place, guy. But... No, well. David's better at it. I don't know. That's not my talent. I, I, I want to be in front of the camera. Right. I fuck it up when I'm behind it. Everyone yeah, get... thinks they're great. Isn't that how photography works? Like, I, I always laugh. Everyone thinks they're phenomenal. But when you see one done right, that's when you go, all right. Now, that's what the fuck photography is. Well, photography is a whole other animal. When you're doing video, you want this thing to be still. So you have to use the gimbal. You got to kind of understand the mechanics of the gimbal. If people don't know what a gimbal is, it's a device you put your camera on. And you can move it around, like you can carry it in your hand. It, 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 it's stable. There's a motor built into it, and it stabilizes it from shaking left and right. That's what people don't really understand. When you have these smaller DSLR cameras, because they're so small, the shake from your hand, they call it micro jitter, and it's just bad. Like the smaller the camera, the more micro jitter you have. So when you have those big cinema cameras, they weigh enough to cancel out the micro jitter. So you might get more of a jerky motion, but you're not going to get that little hummingbird shake but it's also the way jimmy beats off at night Brrrring. when i was in sixth grade i used the two finger method until i learned uh how to palm it better yeah the two finger tweak the left hand's always more of a stranger so one of my buddies uh mike higgins the old drummer for hogan says i don't know if you remember him first and last name folks go ahead sir Oh, well, you know, he, he's, he wouldn't care, but yeah, no, he, cause then he, he, he was in our band and then he joined this other band called, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr., which they actually were sued by Dale Earnhardt. So now they're Shut just Jr. Jr. Yeah, they did. They, they, I don't know if they were sued, but they had to change their name to just Jr. Jr. You have you wow. ever heard of them before? That's a great name though for a band, Jr. Jr., but no. Yeah. So they were pretty big. Like my buddy, uh. He was on like Conan. I can send you some clips of him playing. They on there. opened up for Mister Mister, didn't they? Hey, it, yeah, right before the Sister Sister show. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Next PN Tamara when you need him? <laughs> sister Sister with a special halftime show by Junior Junior, followed up by Mister Mister. Next on TGIF. Yep, Mister Mister. But no, so. I've been sending him some of the rap stuff. That's just funny that we're going over it. He literally just texted me. He goes, this rap beat is tight, bro. He could probably concoct some shit for us because he's a sick drummer. Well, get in line, baby, because right now we're coming out of quarantine and we got a couple producers working on uh, the next one. And we, we might go G-rated. We might go MA-rated. We don't yeah. know yet, folks. What's but that we got guy's a name? Yes. What's the guy's Dakota? name? That we... No, no, no. The, 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 all the beats that we were taking. Oh, Brandy Cole or something. (laughs) Brandy Carlisle's writing rap, folks. We got uh, our hands on this website where you can uh, pay a monthly fee to download uh, and and use videos and raps or whatever. And we found this one guy we really like with a bunch of beats that uh, will be coming soon, folks. Right. We have a a special podcast called Rap Talk. I've just been apprehensive to release it. It's highly offensive well it's not it's not very offensive it's just rap beats and us kind of freestyling over them i gotta listen to it again just to make sure that it's actually audible but i think it's that might be funny. a that might be a patreon move actually yeah Isn't would you would you do you want to hear that again jimmy because you're the only patron yeah well for right now because <laughs> we got these you gotta be rich to be part of our club unfortunately. Dude, there's there's different levels brother there's two dollars five dollars and ten dollars so check it out, ladies and oh, gentlemen, patreon.com okay. at Fat Earth Comedy. I thought I was 15 a month. All right. There's a, there's a $10 one, folks. So leave us a comment below. We're talking about titties and grits today. My one, cut, my one friend just said uh, his favorite line is, if you got pancakes, it was nice to know you. Uh, and that's my big boss's 
hates this part. Apparently he was in his bathroom with titties and grits going for the first time. His wife's in the bed. He probably has pancakes, bro. He's getting ready for work. And right. That's what I was thinking. He must know a pancaker because he comes in and he goes, I liked it up until the point where your buddy's starting to name the styles of tits you guys like. He goes, why you got to alienate people? And I'm yeah. like, oh, my. I go, oh, it, you know, guy wants it's me to go for the gimmick. The- I'm not a, if I if I see a pancake, I'm not going to be opposed to it. I'll tell you that. You're you're the one who talks more about the eraser nipples from uh, the me more. I, I'm really not that I'm not that uh, prejudiced when it comes to that. I respect all women's bodies and all fast sets of them. Am I weird that like. Like sometime I'm in a certain mood and then other times I'm in a certain mood and like I'm like looks on a on a on a woman that I'm attracted to. Like I don't know, I feel like I just I'm I just want like every style race. Like sometimes I'm in this mood or I'm in this mood. Is that weird? Hey, well, you should appreciate them for their personalities, my friend. But no, I, I get it. I I you know, I understand Men are, men are strange because we're looking that we have animal instincts, so it's hard. It's hard <laughs> to base. It. Well, no, it's well, like if you look back, men actually were attracted more to uh, bigger women because they they saw that they would be able to provide uh, nutrients and stuff for the child. So you actually wanted a little meat on their bones, and that's that's what people claim that. Um, that's coming back. Right. Thickness is back, you know. Right. right. But that's actually what people claim is that's why people that's why men love big breasts is because we're looking for an ample uh, an ample breast to, to provide food for a child, you know what I'm saying? That would make sense. I always like try and think of like why is cuz if she's built for speed with a little set, dude, you know, that can sometimes that could be nice too. You know she'll have less back <laughs> problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our cousin's girlfriend had I don't even remember what size breasts they were. They're like triple E's or something. Oh, those things probably shot down to the belly button. I think she had to get reduction, dude. At that level, to me, it's like I—that's not even—that's not up my alley. That I like a, I like a C, you know. I like a nice firm, because you get too big. Number one, it's bad for the bad for the woman. Her backs are gonna gonna hurt. So I just feel bad. It's like. Hers were so big that she had to get a reduction, you know? And then people are, guys are like, oh my God, you got a reduction. It's like, dude, her fucking back hurt. Could you imagine running every day with that if you're athletic? That shit's no, insane. No, mine are bigger than yours. And yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. I can feel these things start to move when I'm jump roping or something. Yeah. This guy's as chuck I get full older, of estrogen, folks. As I get older, I go, holy shit, dude, is that ass doing a wave back there? Yeah, we have to do instead of a sleep skirt, we're gonna have to do some kind of bro or some kind of male bra to keep the breasts from flopping around in the bed. Speaking of the titty area, I love titties and grits where I got the whole outfit was borrowed from my boss besides the grunt call, the Stafford jersey I brought and and they, they put that necklace on me that just was so fitting there. Yeah. And we, we, we got that shot late in the game there of the breast we saw there in the black uh, top. Well, we hold on a second if I can pull this back. So, yeah, we bought this. We bought this pair of we, we paid like 80 beans for this thing. It was before we knew about the video blocks where you can pay a monthly fee and get as many clips as you want. But so we got this pair. Me and Jimmy, we didn't. We don't want to offend people. That's the bottom line. We we, we want to make jokes, Very but we don't want to make people. We want yeah. we don't want women to feel uncomfortable. This or that, but it's. I've shown this to multiple women. They've laughed at it. And they think, if they're like, if you can't laugh at that, then you have a problem. Which whatever. I'm not saying you have to laugh at everything. You could find it childish. You could find it immature. But so we were going out. We didn't want to ask a friend of ours to to to, to show their boobs on on film. We did boobs on film. But so we went on. We got a we got a uh, a stock image, which you know they worked out pretty good. Then no one has to be offended by the thing. But we tried to use the stock image as the thumbnail, and YouTube fought back. Every single thing that our fucking channel does, these all social media fights back on our ass. It's unbelievable. Here, Facebook, take my money. Nope, that's that's banned. Here, I'm putting a pair of boobs in a bra, about a a parodied rap. Called titties and grits. No, that's not acceptable. It's like, dude, and it was good for eighteen hours or something. It was it was on there for a minute, and then all of a yeah. sudden it switched. 
Right. So I don't get it. I mean, I've seen naked breasts. I've seen naked women on YouTube. It's I don't understand how they get away with it. The only thing I can think of is they've been monetized and they're making them money. But it there's it, it can't be like that. There has to be some kind of loophole. Either the it, algorithm isn't yet. finding them. If you search titties and grits, and you and I have way more, we have way more adult thumbnails pop up, not to mention videos. Right. But speaking of this shot we picked, I fucking love the wet hair dripping down and being stuck to the skin. Now, is, is yeah. she sweating? Has she just gotten railed and she's, <laughs> she's getting dancing. back up? She's is, dancing is to the song, man. Hot out of the shower. Is she dancing to the song? You know, I just it it, it funnels my brain in a one second uh, pattern right down the gutter. So I always like that hair dangling down. We'll watch some. Okay, so then this clip, we made a nice pot of grits. Um, and that's them. It's pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory. Cream of wheat. Cream of wheat. Oh, that's not even grits. I well, cream of wheat's very, very similar to grits. Uh, it's about the same thing. It's, the che- it, it's not authentic. You think my ass was making? To my to my credit, I made this the day before and ate some of it, and then uh, and then we had it ready for the shoot. So yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a clip early on where we're flicking butter into it, and this thing is just, it's fucking, uh, it's coagulating to the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was in the free, fridge all overnight, and this thing is rock solid right there, folks. You can even see some separation from the pan on the left-hand side, which is just showing you how rock hard this has become. Plus, it sat outside for about six hours there before we actually used it for any footage. And this is like the last thing we filmed. Just Thank as God like, we got it, yeah. Yeah, it turned out great, but it was B-roll, and we didn't think we'd use it. And But the way Kevin was able to frame it and with the, the old dusty barn stuff, I mean, it was right <laughs> in the barn. The lighting, yeah. everything worked out just so phenomenal. Like you said, it was a lot of luck. Yeah, it was just like we kind of just let it let it all just happen, and... I, sometimes it really works like that. Sometimes it's good to plan. I think with the uh, with the old tune skin, um, we needed to plan because number one, the location was so small. We really had to make use of the rooms. I mean, I had to. Well, we'll talk about that one at another time. But putting a green screen in a in a picture frame so we can adjust the the, the green screen to whatever we want instead of just having to print a bunch of stuff. That was a pretty pretty good move. But yeah, for all you. For all you camera freaks out there, I got a nice uh, Canon 24 to 70. I think I zoomed that into 70 millimeters, and we're at a 2.8 aperture, a nice milky fucking buka, bouquet, whatever the way you say it. Leave a comment below and let us know how dumb we are. But if we we may be dumb, but we can dance. I'll tell you that. I got a lot of production compliments on this video, which I have very little to do with. So thank you, folks. But uh. <laughs> no, man, you were there. You were dancing. Now, dude, the people don't realize it's like you like this, like this shot. I picked you up nice, the background, and you coming forward, man. It's a perfect separation. But the bottom line is, people people always want to spend all the money on the cameras and the, and that stuff. It's like, dude, the fucking set design is really what you want to spend the money on. I'll shoot that in 1080. I'd rather have a sick set and shoot it on 1080 than a fucking a turd set and shooting it on 8k well we've been looking at drones some of these shots would have been cool from an eye level drone as well with uh 4k or similar aperture or similar uh lens quality yeah we should we should shoot a video at belle isle for sure and uh use the drone so we can get some of the city in the background even if we're not even in the shot we can that might be the one we're we're thinking about doing something about uh high school our high school adventures. We'll see what happens, but we'll fucking I'm gonna cruise through this now. Oh, we're at the end anyway. But yeah, the hoagie boys. This is the beginning of it all. I'd like uh I'm glad we had it. You can actually see this nice little red neck of mine. Let's see. You're looking cut there, were you? <laughs> this guy's just an angry dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's mo fungus because that's not like me at all he goes i'm fucking hungry i'm pissed i'm actually ill from this shit let's get this over with no i had a great time filming this one again it was a lot of work but i'd rather crush it into one day hey, look at this you can see a little red of the neck i don't even know how my neck is still red in the middle of the winter but maybe just because my body's so pale i mean people come up to me they lay next to me on the beach to fucking get the reflection off my body 
It's like a living mirror. I'm so it's fucking It's the middle ghostly. of winter. Come on. <laughs> you know what, had you been tan, I would have questioned what was going on. I don't get tan. I get red, bro. I'm telling you. So, yeah, that's uh, that's titties and grits, man. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I, oh, love, I love the running man. Yeah. yeah, I love your dance in there. <laughs> Again, this is the only move I know. So maybe in the next one, I won't dance at all. I like when I just stand there. It looks a little bit better. But yeah, that, that that's this see this shot shows how hard the snow was coming down at the end here. Let me go back. Go back a second there and pause that because you spent some time at the end just in your own zone yeah. filming that. And uh, we were off in the distance just watching, and David and his buddy were there. They were looking to take off and go to the Yeah, I was probably store. pissing these kids off. because No, the no, they were, they were – what I was going to say was they were respecting – The art. And, well, just you getting that shot there, and, and David was – amped up to get a copy of it which we got coming to him but uh it's a great ending it's a great shot it's got everything going on in that barn yeah, is so sick cinematic. location man hell yeah but again so it was that 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 was the perfect example of everything just coming together i mean the snow i was touching back on it before but my camera gear was fucking drenched and again i at that point i was like fuck it man if this stuff breaks, it breaks. But why have the gear if you're not going to attempt to use it, especially during cool times? Money can well, be That's the thing. Away. Like, we look – so in a two-, three-minute video, it all looks energetic and fast. But like we said, we were out there for six eight, six hours or so, and yeah. the camera was on a tripod for most of it sitting right in the snow, whether we were in the barn or um, in the doorway or whatever. But a lot of it, it was sitting, and we were very conscious of it getting that wet and kind of a little bit uh, – worried about it we didn't know like you said you know it's got some water resistant protection properties but uh i don't think on those expensive level of equipment you want to test it no that the camera i wasn't worried about at all because i know like where where the seals are and where the lens attaches to it it was the gimbal because there's cracks all in the fucking thing i don't know how temperamental this machine is but again i i don't think i fired it up since then so this thing might be shattered i don't know it worked all day it worked when I got back, but I haven't. I didn't let the the juice drip drip into to, the bone, uh, if you will. I wanted to mention off topic. Yesterday, I wore a red hoodie. I don't want any son of a guns out there to get all caught up in that. I have another red shirt on. All right, the the Kool Aid Man is here, but uh, bursting this, through the walls. This is a different fleece I have on. So. Just to anyone that's paying attention or watching day to day, I know there's about two of you out there. Uh, I don't think people care, my friend. Oh, I just want to let them know. Just because I'm in quarantine, I'm still changing and showering, and I've started washing my hair again. To any of those that are keeping up with my girlfriend's wants, uh, yeah. it looks I'm nice tonight. Look, done look so listening greasy. to that. This is my new style. I'm going to go with the old part that I had as a four year old. Uh, going full circle on it, folks. That's what I do. I, I have the part to the right, and then one time I tried to do the part to the left, and my hair, like, fucking hung on for dear life. This thing was not going the other way, man. <laughs> right now, I kind of look in. like the villain in uh, uh, The Fifth Element, the dude that has, like, the like hair that comes, like, yeah, perfect. What's his name? Down. What's his name? I don't know, but Bruce Willis uh, no, he's ends a fucking, up. He's a well-known actor. Yeah, he's a great actor. I don't know who he is, though. You got uh, looking it up, damn it. Yeah, but you got uh, who who's uh the black guy that's uh Gary Oldman. That's it. Yeah, Gary Oldman. Yeah. Gary that's Oldman. him, bro. He, well, you're, he's he's a little slimmer little. version of you, but well, well, they all are, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, you look pretty. Sl you looking like you're slimming down this quarantine. It's weird, man. I haven't really. I've been on a diet and I've lost probably ten pounds, five or ten pounds. You know, I eat worse, funny enough. I've always ate better at home. When I'm at work for 50 hours a week and I'm on the go and I'm getting Cadoba or Crossbow or even Jimmy John's, dude. Look at some of these Jimmy John subs coming in at 1,200 calories and shit. I mean. Oh, it's um, all bad for you. It's funny. Like, I watch that, but, like, I'm fat enough to where people wouldn't think I watch that. It just makes me curious that if I paid no attention to it. If I just be a blimp, Ashley's always bucking me, my girl, though, because I'm always like, 
well, don't have more than a pop a day or don't yeah. have all that sugar. or You really got to add all that salt to that that was already processed, you know, or uh, I'm just always like that. But it's so contradictory to how I look. So it's like uh, Prince Fielder. Nobody ever believed oh, he was a Jesus. vegetarian, you know. He goes, I'm a vegetarian. They go, well, bullshit, you're 50 pounds overweight. How the fuck are you a vegetarian? That dude, though, uh, funny enough, did a Sports Illustrated with that episode. Those, uh, yeah, the nude paint. The nude, yeah, and he's cut up like a motherfucker. So it's yeah. funny. So people are stocky, you know. I don't know, I'm fat ass. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how you would look like my one buddy. He's not like if he takes a shirt off, it's like a just like a round belly, you know. I mean, he's not skinny, but it's not like he's like morbidly obese. I think because you have like a, a rounder head and stuff. I think your body kind of fits fits the the whole profile. So I mean, I've seen the uh, there's there's people that are massive that just don't don't have that look and again i don't think you're massive or anything i think it's funny most of it goes to my belly i don't know what it is other than that like i said back in the day i rode in kidney garden i don't care what i do for a living as long as i have a belly big enough to carry around with a wheelbarrow and uh, that was uh my mom just got me this car she just found it she found a bunch of my old school shit and uh she goes you see this you, you jinxed yourself way back in the day. Read this. And I read this. I go, holy shit. I go, what the fuck was I asking for? It was supposed, <laughs> to, be, it was supposed to be what you want to be when you grow up. And I literally wrote, I don't care. <laughs> this guy was playing with the Tonka trucks, man. Uh, I, I do. Funny enough, I got a bunch of Tonka trucks saved for my son. If I ever have one. Yeah, or or well, daughter. You should get on that pretty quick. Or it. Yeah, that's true. We'll have that non-binary uh, baby reveal for you. In Tacoma FD, the, the the second episode, the guy's having a kid. Well, actually, starting off season two, episode one, he's having a kid. Lemmy, the dude from uh, the mustache guy from uh, Super Troopers. You'd recognize mm-hmm. him in two seconds. The dude that's flying in the Porsche on the f- first scene in the first one, you know? He flies by him in the Porsche. But uh, I've been getting real addicted to the show just because the after show is so similar to what Howard Stern does. Howard Stern has this great after show where you ha- they Howard never sticks around for it. But the, the wrap up them, show. Yeah. The rest of them have it. And uh, it used to be better. Now it's just, uh, I know it's I know. Gary, I it's Gary and John Hine. But before it was like everybody and they would just get into arguments. Like when, when Artie was there, when they yeah. first went to satellite, it was phenomenal because Howard created a whole news team just to cover his show. So they have whack pack on there. They're starting in inter- they're starting fights in inside the office and shit, dude. It's unbelievable. But, but that show's so cryptic in the sense of, oh, it's all planned, but it feels like it's all off the cuff, mm-hmm. but it's like, it just, all these shows, I just love knowing what makes them tick. And I, I've known about the broken wizard crew for a long time. And even though the Indian dude, the, uh, the dark skin guy isn't in this. Uh, Farva is Kellerman, I believe, is his last name. Oh, I thought I thought the Indian guy was the host of the after show. Nope, Farva, the guy with the glasses and the mustache and the little cigarette there in his mouth or whatever the fuck that's oh, supposed to represent. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's Kellerman, I believe his last name we is. We call He's him the... landfill, bro. Refer to the good movie, not the not the okay movie. Well, he's the writer director of Tacoma FD, and he on this after show that's also on True TV. I give him all these free plugs, but it's so groundbreaking how they give these guys another thirty minutes after a thirty minute sitcom to discuss. And right now they're in quarantine, so they're all at uh-huh. their own homes, oh, and they cool. dis- they have on one or two members of the cast, and they discuss how they like the dude behind Kellerman, that that dude there with the other big mustache across the hall there. Yep. Um, he's jacked as a mother, dude. And he's like a big time. <laughs> he's like a, an actor that's been in a lot of stuff, but like, so like the, he's talking about how proud he was. Like they show the audition tape and like, they were like talking about how happy they were that he said he would do it. And, and then said he would do a second season once they got picked up for a second one. And that just started They're on, uh, they're on their like third, fourth episode of season two, but it's just so groundbreaking how they do this podcast after the episode. And it's called Talk Oma FD. It's bada bing, bada boom. It's great, dude. It's right up your alley, though. Check it out, True TV. I have it. I don't on have DVR. True TV. I have it on DVR. We'll go back. You know, you could uh, uh, YouTube it or something. I'm sure, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure there's some clips. Someone's stealing something. Yeah, no, that's where we got the idea to kind of go through our own clips. Like we're some badass multimedia 
conglomerate like Howard Stern. We're going to analyze our own show. But hey, I think it's funny. When we watch the outtakes, we laugh our asses off, but people seem to not give a damn. But I don't know. I don't get questions on the comedy cast, but anything we put out that's real production, I get a ton of questions for it. And people are very curious at this level how we can make something that looks semi decent. So, um, Normally, I'm the one selling ourselves short, but I think that this is the more intriguing aspect of of what we do, and uh, we're going to do more of it. If I can persuade Kevin in any format, uh, I'd like to do <clears throat> behind the scenes for Skin Mint, and then I'd really like to do, because I wasn't there while I was there in uh, Heart. I wasn't physically around for like Roseville or Harper Woods or some of these other videos, the ASMR that Kevin's done that has some behind the scenes stuff that even I'd be learning on. And, yeah. uh, so I'm really, we could definitely, that. we could definitely do this on eight mile and some of the top cities, just talking yes. about some of the locations and the ideas behind them. If people are interested in that, leave us a comment, give us a like. Well, yeah, the Harper woods one is definitely qualifying as interesting, especially how it went where we, uh, got on the radar of their uh, neighborhood protection, uh, uh, page and Facebook and that, and the, the small war that in, in, incited from. Yeah, I had a buddy call me. He's like, you're the next Jerky Boys. He's like, you made it. You pissed off the governor, whoever it was. But yeah, we, we, it, the the Harper Woods uh, top city, check it out if you haven't seen it. But it got, to the, it got to the city council on the Facebook page, and they weren't happy. Some people were just, they laughed at it because the bottom line is it's it's just true. It's not like I'm making up any far-fetched ideas. I When I shoot a city, I keep it 100% real i don't go out and shoot detroit and say this is harper woods i shot everything in harper woods i shot everything on D- on eight mile we shot everything on uh on roseville or or sterling heights or wherever we go i did it because of that i'm not gonna sit here and make up weird stories about a town uh, the, the, the truth is uh stranger than fiction if you will my favorite part of the whiplash backlash was uh that people would say in these comments, I used to live there or I grew up there. And then if I looked at their photo, they're about 65, 70 years old. I go, uh, right. Uh, fuck off. I, everything. Yeah. It'd be like making one on Detroit and my grandparents coming out of their grave and going, but in the early 60s, it was amazing. Fuck out of here. It's a fucking dump now. And uh, <laughs> we're sure. I live there. Yeah. Well, no. And it's not a dump when it comes. I'm talking about first world problems here folks we took a picture of some shingles on the side of the road and and my question to to them and i'm not boiling i mean let's not spoil the whole thing but ultimately my question to them was how how many times you drive by those shingles you want to bug us you want to get on mad at us for showing a picture how many times you drive by it nobody does anything about it you know so right right that happens in every city the guy said i go i don't ever remember someone dismembering their entire roof and putting it on city property, not in bags, not in anything, just on city property, the whole roof, sit yeah. down there for six weeks. Get the fuck out of here. It happens in every yeah. city. Yeah, the, someone took the time to look at every joke and explain it. Well, the park was flooded because there was a big rainstorm the night before. That was great, yeah. Well, how do you explain uh, How do you explain the mall? How do you explain Eastland and the catastrophe that's No, that's, no, that's no the one person goes, Eastland, spot on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the one guy who said that Plato's been doing this since the dawn of time. It's fucking satire. The bottom line is there's not any other skit that we've, we've made some skits that are for fun, but that skit might actually raise change. And as someone that's writing comedy to make people laugh, if you can actually make people change over it, that's, that's pretty fucking commendable. I think they're probably showing it at the next meeting there. uh, Right. Start nitpicking their city from within. Yeah, I, I've been watching Parks and Recreation. I was just thinking if they have like a Parks and Recreation meeting, they're like, look at look at the what's been slandered. Look at this. It shows hey, the Tony, parks. Is that your jurisdiction? That looks like a flooding. That looks like a severe COVID nineteen puddle. Breeding dr- ground. Yeah. Breeding, breeding puddle. Yeah, shit's gonna change after this. Now everyone's gonna be up in their game and. We got sanitizing stations at every co- crosswalk, and <laughs> yeah, Eastland's up, been demolished. Pick up your dog ship and make sure you're wearing a mask while you're doing it. The bottom line is, every city you can poke fun of it if you have the right, uh, the right eyes. Because Sterling Heights, that's a massive city. That's one of the reasons we picked it. We figured we'd get more views if we pick bigger cities, and uh, 
you just got to spend some. The reason I did Harper Woods, I knew it pretty damn well. I've lived here for 20 years, so I know the good. I know the bad. And, you know, we expose some of it. But again, every city can, you can do that for. Yes. Yeah. You, you can edit any city into looking like that. And that was the, the funny part of, of the council getting upset. But I don't want to spoil a whole episode we got there because we got plenty to yeah, yeah, yeah. go through on that. All right. Well, that was a pretty interesting uh, run. You got anything else to say there, big jiggity jams? No. Oh, titties and grits was a pleasure. I look forward to more. And, uh, uh, anybody needs to hit us up. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. Hit yep. us back. All under Fat Earth Comedy. If you guys want to see for the next rap song, if you want to see us do something about our high school, growing up in high school, uh, Gross Point days, or do you want to see a man bod? And uh, I think those are the two options. So leave a comment below. We're, we still are waiting for that first comment, folks. We're still waiting for that first comment. Jimmy's been praying every night. That's what's haunting him in his dreams. If we can get a ding. He wants to be woke up from a ding. Not from well, his girlfriend, but from the fucking you, comment section on YouTube. I'll tell you this. I got uh, uh, a nice win coming tomorrow on Twitch. Fat Earth Comedy Twitch. We did it today. Uh, Chili, Snipes, and I had a great win in Apex. And that'll be cut down to a... A highlight there so get ready for that tomorrow folks it's about 20 minutes long and we really slayed the opposition so check us out even on twitch fat earth comedy and uh yeah, tomorrow chopping special, at the bit for that one i'll tell you that i got a special highlight tomorrow <laughs> coming folks all right ladies and gentlemen that's episode 22 we'll see you guys tomorrow 23 i think isn't it jordan oh yeah yeah 23 jordan uh, baby the don't, last don't, dance don't, don't be uh don't be worried. Tomorrow we're actually doing to episode 21 because we had it in the can. So don't let your mind get you too messed up. Well, it's not late. You know, this yeah. guy always. But we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Salute.